Okay, good morning, everybody. You're here live on day three of the Fur Ronde. It has been canceled, but I did bring a special guest, Alex Crittenden, and we're going to be on the air here soon with CBS Sports 590. So once we do that, we'll have a mic up between us. But we wanted to give you all who have been following the race for the last couple of days a chance to hear from the mushers about how they feel and what they're doing next and get a little more understanding. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with... Alex Crittenden from Bundurant, Wyoming. She had a fantastic run yesterday. Um, her video of running with her sled team up Cordova is all over the World Wide Web right now. She had only one hand on the sled and was sprinting up with her dog team, charging. She moved up to fifth place yesterday, which is where our show ended today. Alex, go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know where you're from and what you're doing next. I'm Alex Crittenden. I'm from Bundurant, Wyoming. We drove uh, something like 2,800 miles to get here and run dogs, and it was everything we hoped for and everything we expected. We had a great time. This race is amazing. Um, you can feel it on the avenue even today, even though we're not going out. You can feel the excitement. You can feel the, the amount of people that come together to make this event happen, which is super, super cool. Thanks to everybody who's been watching uh, and cheering and sharing. It's great for our sport. It's great to get it out there and get all these people involved. It's so much fun. And go ahead and tell us what your favorite moment is of the last two days. I know it's a kind of a whirlwind. I remember we talked about how sometimes you can't always remember what's going on because you're so focused, but just what comes to mind? Uh, definitely running up Cordova yesterday was pretty cool. Maybe not the running part, but getting up it and still being alive and being able to breathe, that was pretty great, yeah. And just so proud of my dogs yesterday coming in. And um, yeah, it was not easy out there and they did awesome. And for your uh, family back home, um, of course, they all want to know about how the sled dogs deal with the trails. Now, the reason the race is canceled is because the ice has been getting worse. How did your dogs do? Our dogs did super. We were ready to fly today. Um, we would have only been running nine dogs. We started with 12. Uh, one of them was a foot problem from the ice, but she's going to be just fine. The other two were just a little tired and hot, and we were going to pick the best of our 12 dogs to go today. And so, you know, we were ready, but I appreciate the race organization making the best decision for the dogs and uh, for us. And... Um, and I also really appreciate them asking our opinion on the whole deal. That was really cool that they involved us in that decision. So thanks, you guys. Great, and congratulations to Alex, her husband Sam, her kennel operator down in Wyoming, all her friends and family. Her family's down in West... North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. And uh, Alex came here a couple years ago. We hope to see her every year. She lights up uh, fourth, and hopefully she'll be crowned as a champion here down the road. She yeah. took fifth place this year and had a really extraordinary run yesterday, so check that out on YouTube. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Kale. Okay, back to you, Mike. All right, folks, so there you go. That's on 590 AM here. We got Michael Tetzner coming up next with Eddie. And uh, so what we're doing is, because the race is canceled, we're working on filling the CBS 590 radio so people can hear from the mushers, and then we're getting ready for our award ceremony. So we're bringing the mushers up. The award ceremony is getting prepared. There are the coveted trophies. We'll go on okay, yesterday's we have Michael Petzner here right now. results. <laughs> Michael racing the race. There's the podium. Are you going to move over here? Maybe. How's <laughs> okay. about the race? How, how the first two days did you Oh, uh, the first day I stayed all around on that, so the dogs was looking good and I had some problems for passing and uh, so I uh, was in a good position and yesterday I had a little bit of trouble, so, but still uh, I think uh, it's the right decision to cancel the race for today. and. Uh, the club and everyone make a really good job here and a really good work. So it's one of the important races in the world to be. Yes, for sure. And uh, what do you got for lined up for the rest of the season? You got any more races in line? Yeah, I think uh, my daughter, you know, she's six time world champion now. Uh, she's 11 years old. Uh, she wants to run the junior neck again. And then we're running North Pole and then maybe Limited and the owner. Okay, the Open North American, for folks that don't know, is in Fairbanks. It's the other annual 
big race that the Alaska has the spring game. And so, uh, how many dollars did you bring with you over the this time? You try to always get to me. Oh my God. And as I understand, we had an entire Alberta and rented a rental van and brought the dogs up here. We had a dog that waiting for you. Oh, really? We find some dogs over there. Yeah, we have a dog that we have for you. And do you have any uh, sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, my phone is uh, yeah. Dundas, Lupin Netherlands, Costco, and the company that and Ice Pop. Okay, and if your time is now, we'll be back for next year for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right now, we'll say thank you very much, Michael Ketzler. Thanks, Michael. Great job. Yeah, go to Utah. Okay, okay, we're live back here with one of the Beck family members, and not brothers like I made a mistake on day one. We have Grant Beck here from the Northwest Territories, okay? and you had a really good run yesterday. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the camera and the audience, and let us know how you feel and what's up for you next. I'm Grant Beck, I'm from Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, in Canada, and it's my first time here, and I feel real great. It's a great race, and had a lot of fun here. Excellent. And what's next for you? Uh, do you travel to another race in Alaska or do you go on to races in Canada? No, we're going to go back to Canada and run at least three races in the next, next uh, week, three weekends. So we'll go back to Canada and race in Canada. Wow. So uh, this was your rookie year here. You were certainly ready to finish all three days, it looked like, from yesterday. We'll see what the race officials give you for status. I'd imagine you're no longer a rookie, but let's see on that. How did it feel yesterday when you knew you were having a great run? Oh, it feels good, you know. After the first day, you don't know what to expect when you're a rookie. At my age, you're going to be a rookie, and then you don't know what to expect. So when I got out there the second day, it was much more comfortable. I knew the trail a bit better, and it was, uh, it was getting better as we went along. And we started to know the trail, and dogs started to know the trail, and culverts, and overpasses, and it was all new to us and the dogs. So they did really well. So once I, we knew after the first day, we could, we could handle this, and then we had fun yesterday. It was great. Well, you looked like you were having fun. The dogs look great. The videos are on YouTube and Facebook. Congratulations, Grant Beck. Oh, thank you. And safe travels home. Back to you, Mike. Okay, that was Grant Beck, Brent's uncle. Oh, boy, we have some streepers here. All right. Yep. Okay. Well, folks, we'd like to introduce you to probably two of the youngest professional handlers. And their dad won the race to hand for the ninth time. And we're talking to Elvis Reaper and Clara Reaper. And uh, so, uh, how long have you guys been in Alaska? Yeah, I've been like a few weeks. Okay, and uh, after this race, are you guys planning on going on the third race region? Okay, and uh, how many dogs did you guys bring up here this year? About 40 dogs. Okay, and you guys are every one of them. Okay, and uh, so do you want to say hello to Grandma and Grandpa back at home? Okay, go ahead, hey, Hi, Grandma, hi, Grandma. Hi. Okay, well, thank you girls very much. And, and uh, I suppose both of you are going to race this thing someday, right? Yep, yeah. Okay, good. Well, we have a couple more women champions. going to be young ladies and women here soon enough. They'll be on the street. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. <laughs> Great job, Eddie. Okay, folks, and we'll see who our next musher is. We have a few in the wings here. Looks like it might be Don Cousins. Okay. I got Don Cousins. I'm uh, honored here. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let us know when to cut in. So we're going to go on just so everybody at home is watching. Okay. Good to go. Okay, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here. I'm honored to be here with 20th time Fur Roddy veteran Don Cousins from Crooked Creek, Alberta, Canada. Don is always a gracious competitor, always trusting his dogs. Go ahead and tell us about yourself and what was your high point of the race? Well, the high point of the race was always just getting to the starting line the first day. 
just just to make it here and be on the line and going out with the best in the world to show up here to race is a real honor to do that and to race in this historic event that means so much to the Anchorage area, the Anchorage Club, and the whole state of Alaska. And you know what? To mushing all over the world, people ask, you, know, you ever raced to Anchorage for a rendezvous? And once you've done that, nobody can ever take it away from you. You've accomplished something showing up here racing. But whether you finish all three days or you have a situation like this or, uh, you know, things happen, but just being here and experiencing the whole race, that, that's the highlight of the whole event to me. Excellent. And why don't you go ahead? I know you have a lot of support back home. Want to make sure the folks back home know that you're thinking about them. So go ahead and uh, let us know who's there. Yeah, well, always a big thank you to my wife. She traveled with me for years and years and years. Uh, one time she said, you know, we slept in six beds and seven nights, different nights, and she kind of wound out of the travel. But she was my biggest supporter all the time. Never questions buying another dog or spending money on this or that, all dog related. Uh, so big thank you to my wife for all these years. My kids, I raised them in the, in the dog mushroom community. They raced for years and years and they're well on their way doing their own lives. And uh, just all the other mushers that I've gotten to know over the years, big thanks to them for continuing to support uh, races and traveling around. Good to see the Becks here from Yellowknife. You know, uh, Grant's a pretty historic figure up in the Yellowknife area and Brent and his dad, the same way. They've done a lot of racing uh, all across Northern Canada and even over in Europe. They, I can still can't quite picture Grant Beck packing up and heading to Europe, but he's done that sort of thing. So he's kind of, I've been everywhere, man, you know, good, good people to have around. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on having your best day one ever. And uh, you finished high in the standings. We'll have the awards here soon. And thank you much, so much, Tom Cousins. Yep, and a uh, big congratulations to Buddy Street for just an awesome job he does. Congratulations, Buddy Street. Excellent. Thank you, Don. Okay, Mike, back up to the control room for 5.90 a.m. Okay, friends on the feed, that's how we're doing it here on the street today. You can see uh, we do have a crowd gathering for the award ceremony. Okay, folks, we're happy to talk to one of the three women in the race this weekend. We've got to Andrew Vaughn, Andrew got tent, and uh, this is your first time here, right? <laughs> okay, thank you. 
Okay, friends, so the award ceremony will be right here, live on 4th here, pretty soon. Looks like we have Frank Haberman coming up. Where should I look? Okay. Let's see if, uh, is Mike ready for us? Good to go? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Frank Haberman, originally from Germany and living in Clam Gulch, Alaska. Frank, how was your run? Uh, pretty good so far. We had a very good two days. I kept the dogs behind back quite a lot, spent most of my time on the drag mat. And at 14 dogs first day, 14 dogs second day, I would have had 14 dogs a day again. And no foot injuries, no issues. And the dogs are well arrested, would have been ready to really let go, but that's the way it goes. Yeah, yeah. what's next for you, Frank? What are you training for in uh, the rest of March and April? Well, we're going to go to the Open North American and um, the team is going to train a bit shorter distance now, run a bit faster. They're going to get a few days off. Hopefully we don't get any more problems with moose, <laughs> uh, which was quite a bit for this year. And uh, then we should have a full team, 14 dogs, maybe 16 dogs, ready to race in Fairbanks. Great, and what is your absolute best memory of the last two days? What comes to mind right away? Uh, just seeing the dogs really enjoying themselves and uh, it was the, the side of happy dogs coming into the finish line. They were lo loping up Cordova Hill, they were loping right into the finish. Um, they were just having a blast. And one of the reasons was possibly we had such a really bad winter so far with big snow dumps, no snow machine available to me, and uh, breaking trail with a sprint team is not the best thing to do, but uh, now they're really enjoying themselves. So you had some really strong sprint dogs this year. Congratulations, you look great coming up Cordova yesterday, and good luck with the rest of the year. Okay, thank you. Frank Haberman, and back up to you, Mike. All right, so that was Frank Haberman. We have another couple uh, interviews that Eddie and I are taking turns. This is going on CBS 590 AM, and that uh, will get us to the one o'clock hour. Okay, folks, we're here on uh, Alaska's favorite. This is a rookie of the race. Carl Earhart. Carl is the sixth Earhart to ever race this race. He tried ties the streamer name. He's had also six family members at this race. So Carl, how was your first fur on you? Oh, this is the most fun race of my life. Uh, I've been here plenty of times with my family handling, uh, watching, you know, from 15 to Cordova, but to be on the back of the sled and see it from the other side is the uh, it is the best race in my life, and it's been so much fun. Thank you guys, thank you very much. So, tell us about your race. How, how, how did you treat you the first two days? Uh, yeah, it was a lot. You know, from that trail go around, I thought I knew a lot about it, but for all me, what it took to get a dog ready for this, and after that trail go around, not much It's like, this is the real test of the dogs right here. They had every kind of variable you need to meet. Just to make it here on the street, you have to be prepared. So, yeah, I was proud of the dog. That's what they came here to do was come here and finish, and we were ready to go as they did. And so, uh, uh, you were born on the dog team, obviously. Your dad ran it. How many other people, five other people, we counted six air hearts now, so you're the sixth one to run this thing. And then your wife and mom, so you know, you're number seven, and you're going to pass the street, because we got to get another street for this thing. So, air hearts going to get ahead of us on the end. <laughs> and so, uh, you have a sponsor with Penny? Uh, yeah, it took a lot of people to get in here on the street. Uh, first off, start with the dogs. My team consisted of seven canine athletes from Pro Dog Racing, three from Earhart Kennels, uh, the John Earhart, one from Francis Roberts, uh, the uh, Francis Captain Dog, and I got five uh, super, super canine athletes this evening, so I can thank those guys. And then all my sponsors, it took the Mayo family, the Denny family, the Probert family, um, uh, Craig and Pamela Brees, uh, Irene Todd and Allen, all of the Earhart family, and my corporate sponsors are Blue Bears of Alaska, Vanderbilt Farm Corporation, a uh, local business right here in Anchorage called Alaska Memorials and Monuments. It's a uh, family owned and operated locally right here in Anchorage. Them. And uh, my wife and my kids, I think I had the best of the victories. <laughs> okay, so.
So uh, what's your plan now for the rest of the season? Uh, the next weekend is the race of Dan the Cross. Uh, there's two races happening, the North Pole Championships, North Pole and uh, Dan Cross, both Ken Dog. The North Pole is 12 miles, Dan Cross is 10 miles, so I'm like, you know, if you're not going to race North Pole, please come out to Dan Cross, we'll be there supporting them. Congratulations, brother. Right on. Okay, Eric LaForce. Eric LaForce is coming in here, folks. I'll turn the camera around. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, I get to introduce Eric LaForce from Canada. And Eric had a really good run today. He'll be uh, showing that off here in just a minute when he gets to the board. Let's go ahead and hear about how it went. <laughs> Oh, that's plastic, that's plastic, though. I want to uh, say I'm very proud to be here in Alaska and racing is the amazing race of Randy. Uh, I grew in Montreal. I'm a city guy. I know family on that sport. And I'll be a fireman in fire department in Montreal. Start to buy a house outside the town. Make a small kennel. I received a help from Marshall in Quebec. Build the team, build this dream, think about uh, be here, part of this uh, famous musher run in Rundi. So I'm very happy to be here. Excellent. Hey, when you think through your memories right now, what was the best part of the last two days for you? The best part of the last two days was when uh, my girlfriend Jesse helped me take care of my dogs and uh, support me all the morning. and. The race was okay for me, but tough on my dog. I'm not a open class kennel, just limited. I got 27 dogs all in my kennel, so I'm traveling with 23. On that, I got 16 adults. So uh, I used a stronger one, I guess, for this race. And they work very hard, let's say. So what's up the toughest one I do? Great. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations, Eric. Congratulations to your girlfriend. You guys were a really good team out here. I'm looking forward to you coming back next year. Oh, I'm going to leave the, the flag to my girlfriend. So she's supposed to race in Quebec for three years in a row. So we never know what the future, what they're going to do, but maybe. Excellent. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Back up to you, Mike. Okay. All right. Are we going to get some rewards? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out this feed right here, folks. I'll get ready for the live awards here. And thanks so much. Just stay tuned. We'll get reset in just one minute.